Buckingham Palace announced Her Majesty has sprained her back and was disappointed that she would miss the annual service, but some fear there is more to the story. Piers Morgan took to Twitter to share his concerns saying that it might be more of a serious situation than is being made by palace officials and there's something we're not being told about her health. Prince Harry's intervention on misinformation and social media was met with a backlash this week. The Duke of Sussex spoke out about misinformation as a global humanitarian crisis during the Rewired conference in New York. Historian and royal expert Dr. Tessa Dunlop told Palace Confidential that it was time for Harry to take a step back. She said, in relation to Harry and Meghan, and this torturous doing and froing with social media, I agree they need to take a step back. They tm re clearly spending way too long scrolling. There seems to be ambiguity around his messaging. I am fond of him and I think he could be better advised to steer clear of big issues like the First Amendment when it comes to social media. Daily Mail TMS Royal Editor Rebecca English told Palace Confidential that Harry's speech turned into one of his predictably boring and pedestrian diatribes about the media. The Daily Mail TMS Diary Editor Richard Eden echoed this, as always with Harry and Meghan, they say things that leave you very confused afterwards. He pointed to Harry's claim about Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter. During his speech, the Duke said that he messaged Twitter TMS CEO to warn him that his platform was being used to plot a coup ahead of the 6th of January attack on the US Capitol. The Prince was speaking as part of a panel at Rewired TMS 2021 conference that examined how misinformation on social media spreads lies, hatred and propaganda. Mr. Eden said, he was sort of suggesting it was from his monitoring of social media, but they TM they previously said that they are boycotting social media. Sometimes it TMS quite hard to keep up. Rob Rinder responded to the Duke's remarks on misinformation by pointing out that he signed a deal with Netflix, which spreads misinformation about the royal family with the Crown series. On Good Morning Britain this week, Mr. Rinder said, I want to be clear, I like Meghan and Harry, her views might not be your cup of tea, fair enough. But my question is, if he's worried about misinformation, what about the fact him and Meghan have taken a huge deal from Netflix and the misinformation about his late mother, Lady Diana, and they've taken millions of pounds? How is that okay, how is that consistent, or not misinformation? 8. Duchess of Cambridge visited the Generations, Portraits of the Holocaust exhibition yesterday, to mark Remembrance Day. The exhibition features 50 photographic portraits of Holocaust survivors and their families, including two images captured by the Duchess herself and reportedly brought back many memories of the incredible people Kate has met in recent years. Veteran Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle marked the poignant event in a very different way in the USA. They attended the Intrepid Museum TMS Salute to Freedom Gala where Prince Harry presented Intrepid Valor Awards to five service members, veterans and military families living with invisible wounds of war. Duke and Duchess of Sussex will miss Remembrance Day in the UK, instead paying their respects at a Veterans Day ceremony in New York. Harry and Meghan attended the 2021 Salute to Freedom Gala at the Intrepid Museum in the Big Apple last night. Harry wore his military medals and the cross of the Knight Commander of Royal Victorian Order, while Meghan wore a red gown, and both adorned their outfits with a poppy. The Duke presented Intrepid Valor Awards to five military personnel living with the invisible wounds of war. Harry served in the military for a decade, including two tours of Afghanistan, and spoke of the impact his experiences have had on the man he is today. He said, I served 10 years in the military, including two tours of duty in Afghanistan one as an FAC, forward air controller, on the ground and in the dust with some of you, another as an Apache helicopter pilot in the air supporting and talking with you. Nothing was more valuable than the time I got to spend with my soldiers in a shell scrape, eating an MRE, meal, ready to eat, in the back of a tank, thanks for the swaps flying a mission overhead knowing those below were safer, or making each other laugh when it was needed most. My experience in the military made me who I am today, 
and I will always be grateful for the people who I got to serve with wherever in the world we were. The Sussexes paid their respects last year by laying a wreath and flowers at an obelisk to commemorate two fallen Commonwealth soldiers. Meghan wore a black wool coat, and Harry a blue suit with his army medals. They released a series of photographs afterwards. Pod Save the Queen is hosted by Anne Gripper, and she is joined by the Mirror TMS Royal Editor Russell Myers. Ms. Gripper read out listener comments which branded the photographs staged and cringeworthy. Others, however, defended the Sussexes, saying it was appropriate and respectful given that Harry is a veteran himself. Mr. Myers said the sheer number of photographs had left him shocked and suggested that they could have just taken a picture of their backs, and another of the wreath they laid. If you TMD just had their backs and another picture of the wreath they TMD laid, I think that would have been appropriate. It TMS just, I think, the criticism labeled at them, saying that once again had been made about themselves is a case to answer, unfortunately because I was just shocked at the number of photographs that were then put out to the world TMS media. Former Good Morning Britain host Piers Morgan labelled the images a distasteful PR stunt at the time. His co-host Susanna Reid, however, disagreed, the armed forces mean a lot to Prince Harry. He served 10 years. He was blocked, allegedly, from having a wreath in his name placed at the cenotaph. Why wouldn't TMT he want to show his respect when he has such a strong connection to the military? She added, if you don't TMT do it with a photographer, people don't TMT know that you TM they done it. Buckingham Palace reportedly denied Harry TM's request to have a wreath laid for him at the service in Whitehall. However, Ms. Gripper pointed out on Pod Save the Queen that Harry could have separately arranged to have a wreath laid on his behalf as the cenotaph is a public monument, it did not need to be part of the official ceremony. She said, the cenotaph is there, it TMS on a public road after the official ceremonies happen, people can lay wreaths. She added, if he wanted to leave a wreath and pay a private respect, he could have done so, but it didn't TMT need to be as part of that ceremony. While coronavirus restrictions at the time would have made it difficult for Harry to attend, he could have asked someone to lay one for him in his absence. To subscribe to Pod Save the Queen go to your normal podcast provider. Meghan Markle has been accused of using her title to gain access through cold calling US senators as part of her campaign for paid parental leave, and using her royal title to do so. Buckingham Palace officials have said that Meghan's use of Duchess title regarding politics is outrageous because members of the royal family try to steer clear from influencing political decisions, especially in a different country. Royal editor of the Daily Mirror, Russell Myers, joined Lorraine Kelly to talk about the Duchess of Sussex and her use of the title for her lobbying work. Lorraine commented, I completely understand what she's saying. It's a difficult one, Though, isn't it, it really is because they still are styling themselves as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Mr. Myers said, they are, the issue was because she was reaching out to senators getting their phone numbers and then they were picking up the phone of an unknown number and she was introducing yourself as Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. So I think that is the line or the setting a grey area a little bit. You can understand that. Listen, a really important campaign, making strides on it and I think that anyone should be supporting that move for paid parental leave. Lorraine suggested the Duke and Duchess of Sussex however may reach a tipping point where they may need to give up their titles in the future. The Queen awarded Prince Harry and Meghan Markle their titles as Duke and Duchess of Sussex in honor of their wedding in May 2018. They were also given the titles of Earl of Dumbarton and Baron Kilkeel, making Meghan the Countess of Dumbarton and Baroness Kilkeel. Meghan has been the first Duchess of Sussex in history, as the royal title has never been used before. Given the circumstances of how they were awarded their titles, it would be a difficult process to be stripped of them by the Queen. Dr. Bob Morris, a senior research fellow at the Constitution Unit, told The Independent that the removal of Harry and Meghan TMS titles would require an act of Parliament. 
Queen's awkward apology after foreign dignitary left stunned by breaking wind. Meghan Markle could use royal family connection to secure enormous commercial deals. Meghan Markle's ex-husband turns heads as he gives new child regal name a statute to remove their titles would need to be voted on and passed by both the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Unnamed senior figures of the palace told Evening Standard that there is no appetite to strip either Meghan or Harry of their titles. The position on titles has been discussed by all parties months ago and remains the same.